After an eventful interview with Eli, you return home to an even bigger problem. Is everything going to turn out okay? Yes, today we are back with the next chapter of Dopes on the Chapters app. If you did not see the first one, catch up on it right here. It was getting wild and crazy. Our character is an icon. She is a strong single mother at the moment, and she moved her daughter to protect her daughter. They moved to a new state, a new city. She did this to help her daughter out. And while there, we go to a meeting just to kind of for single parents help because she's struggling a little bit. And we meet three men. We meet three very handsome men. We get along with all of them. One of them is a sweetheart. The other one's kind of like a bad boy, but he owns a bookstore. So we went to his bookstore. We had a little moment with him. And then the third one, he's this cold ice king, as the game describes him. And come to find out, he's the principal at our daughter's school. And he hired us. That spells trouble. That spells trouble right there. And we love to see it. Then we find out they're all our neighbors. All three of them are our neighbors. They're out there cooking, having a little cookout, shirtless, sweat dripping down their six packs and they invite us so we're gonna see what happens next this neighborhood is getting wild it's getting crazy we hopefully are gonna snag all three of them we're apparently gonna get pregnant by one of them after a night with all of them so we're gonna see what happens here but if you guys enjoy and want some more please consider hitting that like button as it helps the channel a lot subscribe if you haven't already and without further ado let's start the drama which will you choose a block party is in full swing and you just learned that all three men you met at the single parent group live on your streets. Oh my gosh. I'll, okay, have a drink with Eli, play basketball with Landon, or join Mason for dinner. Okay, so we spent time with the other two. Let's get a drink with Eli because we need a point with him. Let's have a little drink real quick with our new boss, the principal. Striding to Eli's porch, you take the offer drink. It's cold and warm at the same time as I pass <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Passes down your throat. Mm -hmm. Bottoms up. Eli toasts his glass against yours, then downs the whiskey in one gulp. That's some strong stuff. Oh, as an ice cream truck rolls into the cul-de-sac, several children run out from a nearby yard to beg their parents for a treat. After you and the guys join the throng, a little girl runs up to Eli and pulls on his pants leg. Okay, so this is his daughter. Daddy, money now. She knows what's up. She said money now. What do we say? <laughs> you never say please. You just tell people to do stuff. I love Kyla already. She's learning. She's learning. She's learning good. Mason chuckles, but while he's distracted, a slightly older boy reaches into Mason's back pocket and snags his wallet. Sean, that is not how we act. Oh, says who? <laughs> these kids are running all over these parents. You sit with Landon on his porch steps as Mason and Eli's kids make their cases for ice cream. Do you ever miss when Alice was that little? I miss it all the time. I feel like all parents, you kind of miss all ages that your kids go. The Rome was such a little punk, but I miss when he relied on me. Same, Alice is so independent now. A shadow falls over you as a teenage boy walks up beside you. Can I get some ice cream, Dad? Okay, so this is without responding. Landon tosses the boy's wallet. The boy thinks and then runs into the streets. Wow. He... What about me? Can I get some ice cream? Rowan's so polite. Are you sure he's your son? Don't let the tattoos fool you. I'm a perfect gentleman. I believe it when I see it. Landon gestures to the street at the young children. You ever think about having another one? Oh, I, I feel like we're okay at the moment. I'm good on the one kid, but that might be because I don't have a partner. The right partner is essential. Yes, I feel the same way. Maybe someday. Yeah, maybe someday. Well, we'll see about that one someday. That's definitely a someday. The gold. Well, if we know the premise of the story, it might be today. We don't know. It could be tomorrow. It could be today. It could be this week. It's coming soon. So you can knock on my door anytime, by the way, in case you need a cup of sugar or anything else. Oh, we need, we're vitamin D deficient, so we're gonna need a lot of that. So we're gonna have to ride you, okay? It's just how it has to go. Flirt back. Maybe I will. 
looking forward to it. It's, well, don't you worry, because we're coming soon. As you walk back to your house, your head is spinning. Our house is so pretty inside. Can we talk about that real quick? I love how it looks. The colors, I mean, there's some color. Well, okay, we're no, I'm not playing home interior design. Let me move on. Alice waits by the door like she's the concerned parent. She crosses her arms. You know Rowan's dad. We met at the group. He owns a bookstore in town. Oh, is this her little boyfriend? Mom, I can't believe you do this. Rowan is the boy I like. Oh, shit. My daughter has a crush on Landon's son. Um, I can't believe you're already dating Rowan. So, sweetie, don't worry. We're dating all the dads. It's it's equal. Alice's face cracks when the vulnerability hidden behind her tough, snarky exterior. You think through the brief chapter you write in the book Landon gave you. Moving on. Maybe I can use some advice from my book. You got this, sis. Alice, listen. My relationship with other people won't change ours. You're my priority no matter what. Uh, even more than dating, more than dating, marriage, my career, even ice cream. Alice wipes a tear from her eye. Do you really mean that? I do, sweetie. As you sit next to her and rub her back, you search for the right thing to say. A stream of uncontrolled tears flows down her cheeks. What if you end up marrying that man? Marry him? Alice has never been emotional, not even when her dad left. This isn't about Landon. It's got to be about something else. She appreciates talking things out. I should try to get to the root of the issue. Good job. Alice will appreciate a respectful discussion. Okay, honey, why are you so worried about this now? I had plenty of male friends when we were in the city. Yeah, but... But this isn't about Landon, is it? No, not really. I mean, sort of. It's about Rowan. She wipes a tear from her eye. I really like him, but what if things end like they did with Perry? Inside, you fume with the name of Alice's first boyfriend who stalked her when she broke it off. Oh, disgusting. He was the whole reason you moved Alice away from NYC. No wonder Alice is emotional. She's afraid and she needs me right now. I could use some of your famous advice. Do you want me to respond as your mom or as a therapist? How about both? You know what? We're going to get a little both. You know what? Let's be nice to our daughter. I want to be really sweet to her. I'll also have some tough news for you. What? It doesn't get easier, even when you're my age. Alice's face twists into pain. How was that supposed to make me feel better? Well, we had the ice cream option, girl, but we're giving you real life advice. It's just one or the other. Because all those feelings that you're feeling now, over time, you learn how to wield them. T. So it does get easier. It does. It really does. Well, oh, she said no, but you'll get stronger. I think... It gets easier in the sense of when you're stronger and you know how to handle situations a little better, it becomes easier in that sense. It doesn't get easier emotionally, but you can handle it better. That's how I feel about it. You brush the hair from Alice's face. I'm really happy and you're already the strongest woman I know. Aww. A smile breaks through Alice's tears. She was worried and nervous. And remember, I love you no matter what. I love you too. Good. I'd be heartbroken if you didn't. Thanks, Mom. That actually makes me feel better. Okay, so that was cute. I'm really happy about that because, okay, Loki, I thought this was going a different direction. I thought she was getting really, like, upset that we were dating her crush's father as, like, and you can't be with him. I want to, you know, be with Rowan and blah, blah, blah. And I was about to be like, sis, like, I understand the teenage feelings, but at the same time it's like let your mom be happy she's already done enough for you but it didn't go that route it was a whole different route and it was a really cute it was a cute moment for them as like a mother and daughter i liked that i need to wear something that gives me a boost of confidence i'll wear something okay this is our feminine floral Ooh, red and rowdy pink and perfect oh girl we're going red and rowdy we're letting him know we are ready. All right. Oh, Eli plus one. Ooh. As you walk down the hall calming yourself, you take in the building you may soon be spending a lot of time in. Instead of Eli, it's Mason you spot. What's Mason doing here? I should... I shoot him a flirty smile. Your eyes lock with Mason's bright and radiant with a hint of sadness. 
To your relief when you smile, he returns the gesture. Why is he here, though? I've seen you a lot lately. Our paths seem to be intertwined. What could I say? I like it. I hope we're going to be intertwined. A warm jolt flushes across your skin. What are you doing here? Your kiddo's too young to be a high schooler. I work here. Oh, we're working here too. Mason gestures towards the nurse's office. In his voice, you catch a hint of embarrassment. Why are you embarrassed? Oh, they're lucky to have you. That's great. I hope so. Most days they feel lucky to have them. Trust me, they're lucky as hell. I used to work in a faster paced environment, but I had to take a break. Mason scratches the back of his neck. I slow down a little. Okay, well, um, I mean, being a nurse is a noble job, but we'll just see he'll get a better job someday because I want to save my gems for something. I like that very much, but I'm not sure I have it in me. You do. You do. Well, I believe in you. I love how you win the non-gym options like you get good options and responses. I love that. He leans into as if he's going to say something more, but the sound of boots stumping down the hall interrupts. Oh, Nurse Barna, are you assisting Miss Stevens with the paper cut? <laughs> Eli's intense presence takes over the hall as Mason folds his arms. I want to butter up Eli before the interview. Okay. You place your... Oh. Maybe we should have made a joke. You place your hand on Eli's form, distracted them, impressed with how muscular his arm is. You're sharp, Principal Alvarez. Don't compliment him, Jordan. The man already has enough of an ego. Eli shoots Mason a death stare. Jordan, follow me to my office. We're running behind. Okay, we're here, y'all. Hello, our boss. Mason's already here, too. The nurse. We get everybody. This is a small world. Okay, so he used to be a surgeon, you know. Oh, I, you, I see you've already impressed him. Time to impress the principal. Oh, with what With what skills? <laughs> with what skills are we going to use to impress you? We got a lot of skills here. He was a surgeon. What happened? That's his business, but I wouldn't have given up such an illustrious career for anything. Well, Eli leaned across the desk, his sharp features cutting through you. I like power, Miss Stevens. Oh. When Eli's focus narrows on you, you feel small, vulnerable, and stimulated all at once. Oh my goodness, I should play into his power. He loves power, so we'll give him some of that. Good going. Eli will be putting in your hands. See, I wanted, I was originally going to be like, oh, we're strong too. You think you like power? Wait till you see us. But since he likes power, we're going to play into that. And we're going to turn him into putty later. I love him. See, we're doing a little move right there. You are a powerful man, aren't you, Principal Alvarez? Eli grins a toothy shark smile that makes your knees weak. Play into their what they think is their strength and then make it their weakness in more ways than one. It's funny that you, Mason, and Lena live so close to me. Be careful with Landon. He's a heartbreaker, you know. Oh, oh, thanks for looking out for me. Um, just watching out for a new friend. Hopefully a new employee. <laughs> we'll see. This is a job interview, isn't it? Eli pulls a leather-bound book and a dark black pen from his desk. He licks the tip. Fine, let's focus on you. You moved here from NYC. It looks like you gave up quite a job. I did. Because Alice got into trouble. I already told him Alice and I left NYC because of her stalker ex, and that doesn't give have a damn thing to do with this interview. I'll be polite about the situation. No, Alice is a straight-A student with a wild imagination. I'm lucky to be her mother. Sometimes the smart ones are the most trouble. Alice is a lovely kid. I give up more than a high-powered job for her if I had to. Eli squares his shoulders, tensing his jaw. I might seem intense, but that's because I run the most prestigious public high school on the coast. I need to make sure that my staff doesn't just meet my criteria. They need to exceed it. He's testing me, trying to see I reflect to conflict. Besides, I like biting back with him. Put him in his place, girl. You know what? We played into his power. Put him in his place. I'm confused. That's not very promising. You call me Principal Alvarez. You obviously thought I was a promising candidate. You sit up taller in your chair. Yes, ma'am. Yet you seem perplexed that I'm here. Why is that? I'm not perplexed. 
Oh, the tone of your voice indicates otherwise. People bite when they feel insecure. Classic fight or flight response. I have over 20 years of therapeutic experience. If you have any questions regarding that, I'd be happy to answer them. Ooh, fine. What would you say is your greatest accomplishment? Easy. It's uh, uh, the multiple awards in my field, the relationship, the multiple awards in my field. I feel the daughter won. How many? I stopped counting after 30. Even though Eli tries to hide a smile, a hint of it breaks through. I won't be taking further questions. My resume speaks for itself. Throw those papers down, girl. It was a pleasurable... Prin- ple- I can't even speak right now. It was a pleasure, Principal Alvarez. For a moment, Eli says nothing. Then he parts his hand and shrugs. Touché. Mm, that's right. That's right. Oh, is this our kitchen? When you get home, you wait a cup of coffee. You pour yourself a cup of coffee while you wait for Alice to bike home. You hold the cup of dark roast to your nose. Smells like smoke. Suddenly the fire alarm blares. What? I should check the oven. There's nothing in it. This isn't even on. What's going? (gasps) Outside the fire licks the roof of your house as smoke pours from the window and doors. How could this happen? What? The bright lights of a fire truck flash as the fire department approaches. Eli, Mason, and Landon file into your yard. Literally how? It's going to be okay, Jordan. The important thing is you're okay. I mean, yes, but what? Where's your daughter? A scream comes from the house. Excuse me? That's Alice. She must be inside. When did she get home? (laughs) 